Hi guys, just finished watching the New Zealand Ireland game. Final score New Zealand 46, Ireland 14. Unlike the England Australia game, I think that scoreline sums up the match perfectly. New Zealand very clinical, very strong in almost every department, and Ireland just poor, sloppy, too many mistakes, and New Zealand punished them. Uh, that should be a real disappointment to Ireland for how they, they played. To be honest with you, I did say in my podcast earlier in the week to Brandon of BIS Rugby that if New Zealand get under Ireland's skins early, Ireland could struggle. And that's exactly what happened. New Zealand got a wee bit lucky with their first try because uh, Brody Retallick looked like he came in from the side a bit to clear the Ireland player out. And the gap was there for Aaron Smith to exploit and he scored a try. The second one just came from an Irish er error and New Zealand counter-attack. They caught the Ireland dogleg defence, went wide and then just left space to exploit for uh, on the narrow side when they got to the, uh, by the five metre line for Aaron Smith to exploit and score the try. The third one, uh, Johnny Sexton, I think there wasn't that much he could have done. He was under pressure and he would, if he was, he kept the ball in and he was being tackled, he would have been driven backwards and there would have been a lot of pressure from an all-black onslaught coming over him. So I don't blame him too much there and he just knocked it out of his hands and then New Zealand exploited that and scored again. And then it was basically ownage from there. Uh, I think... Ireland didn't help themselves with how many mistakes they made, how many sloppy penalties they gave away. Peter Omani especially, just before half-time when Ireland had territory, when there was a New Zealand player out the game, he didn't need at all to go in straight with a shoulder like that and give away an absolute dumb penalty. He can only blame himself there. And then the second half, New Zealand just showed what a good team they are. And especially with regards to phase play rugby, they showed how to do it properly. Um, with regards to just keeping the ball, wearing the opposition down and just keep going through the hands, be impatient and then the gaps will appear and that's exactly what happened for Cody Taylor's try, they just went through the phases and then Ireland just got worn down and Cody Taylor just went straight through under the post. Um, Matt Todd's similar in a lot of ways, they just kept the ball, kept going through the phases, exploited Ireland out wide and then Matt Todd went over. Uh, Ireland did try to get themselves back into the match, um, but it was too little, too late, really. Uh, they scored a decent uh, line hit by CJ Stander drawing the all-black defence, and Robbie Henshaw then went through the middle and scored a try. Uh, but by then, it was totally game over. Um, Ireland had pretty much no hope, and it didn't look good at all. To be fair, I thought their substitutes, players like Joey Carberry, added a little bit of spark when he came on, because um, I thought Johnny Sexton had a really poor game today, and was for the most part, really just not controlling things, not finding his touches properly, basic mistakes that you'd expect a player of his experience and quality to make. But overall, New Zealand then, um, it was a penalty try. I think uh, that was spot on by Mike Nigel Owens, um, and New Zealand scored a couple of tries as well. But overall, I don't think Ireland can complain at all. New Zealand were clinical. They were brilliant defensively. The pressure they put on Ireland, Ireland just couldn't have, didn't have an answer. This Ireland team now have been truly worked out that if you have a clinical rush defence and of course you're clinical in possession and you get them on the back foot both with regards to your tackles and in the breakdown then Ireland looks stuffed. They don't have a plan B. It was the same against Japan to be fair. They didn't have, Ireland didn't have an answer when Japan got them in a stranglehold. They didn't know what to do and it was the same here. Their defence was for the most part in the match too narrow and New Zealand exploited it. And it's been a recurring problem for Ireland under Joe Schmidt's reign, to be honest. They've had these kind of performances uh, creeping in uh, from time to time for the last six years or so. It's six years he's been in charge. And it just seems to be mostly the same problems. Narrow defence, um, not being able to cope when a rush defence is clinical and precise as New Zealand's was today, as was the case with England and Wales and the Six Nations. And as was the case against Japan. So... Going forward, Ireland, you need to find a way of being more patient, keeping the ball when there's a clinical rush defence. There is ways around it. You know, you just need to keep the ball more and try and be more precise and more patient and and play with more speed when it's on, but not when it's not on, obviously. So I think it's quite a sad way for Ireland to end uh, Rory Best's career like that because he's been a great player and a great servant for him and achieved so much. And also sad for Joe Schmidt because... Despite Joe Schmidt's flaws as a coach, he has um, 
achieved a great deal with Ireland. Two, no, three Six Nations titles, one of them a Grand Slam, two wins against New Zealand for the first time ever, and the first ever series win in Australia. That's a, a heck of an achievement that um, he can be proud of and Ireland can be proud of, but these sort of performances have just been creeping in for a while and teams have now worked this Ireland team out. So under, um, under Andy Farrell, I think they need to go for youth more. I think the players like Larmer and Carberry today when they came on, like say, they added a bit more energy to the team. And going forward, I think that's where their future lies and they need to have more variety in their game plan and to know how to defend out wide better than they do right now, especially today. Um, they were really exploited and caught, caught short a lot of the time by the All Blacks. From New Zealand's point of view, they go on to the semi-finals and I think they'll give England a really tough game. I don't think England will defend as narrowly as Ireland did uh, today. I think it'll be a bit harder for New Zealand, but if you watch New Zealand play, they show how to play phase play rugby, as I call it, where you just keep going through the phases, wear the opposition down and the chances will come to you. That's what New Zealand are brilliant at, and their defence was excellent as well. Um, so England will be need to be a lot more precise, especially with their kicking game. I see actually a lot of kicking from both sides next week, um, and it will be a really interesting battle. I think New Zealand have the edge right now, but it's going to be a heck of a contest, and we'll see what happens, because I still, as I said in the last video, have my problems with this England team. I think if a team can get under their skins, like... Um, Wales and Scotland did in the second half of the Six Nations then I don't know how England can handle it whereas New Zealand like I said you know last four years they've had a few downs and um, they've not been the team they were in 2015 but now they look like they're really coming good and they'll be absolutely they are absolutely favourites to win this Webb Ellis Trophy for the third time in a row so Going forward, it'll be a fantastic semi-final, no doubt. I'm looking forward to it. Tomorrow's games, Wales against France and Japan against South Africa. I'll do videos for them as best I can. And I'm looking forward to those games as well. It's been a cracking World Cup. It keeps going. And I hope it will continue to keep going. And I thank you all for watching my video, guys. Uh, it's been, it's always nice to talk in these. I think I'm getting better at them. But I uh, hope you have an awesome day. Uh, commiserations if you're the teams that lost today in New uh, Ireland and Australia. Uh, well done to England and New Zealand. Thanks very much for watching, guys. Take care and have an awesome day.